Reef Bum is sponsored by Bulk Reef Supply and Ecotech Marine. viewer reached out to me, Andy, <clears throat> also known as Alexa Inverts, and um, he wanted me to ask you this question. He said um, that your hypothesis is that keeping trace elements in balance is the best way to optimize coral immunity so they can resist bacterial pathogens like Arcobacter. Can, can you explain that, uh, Claude? Okay, it's very simple. Um, the most the theory today and the most thinking about today is that the people looking on the sea, so they, they, there was um, there were some labs around. They telling we detect the water from Hawaii or from Australia. Have a look how is there the water chemistry, and that that is what we put in the reef tank. The problem is that this is the sea, and on the other side is an aquarium. And the difference is very simple. In the sea, they have a, they have a, a very good water, very low nutrients, absolutely low no, low in everything, and they have a lot of food. In our aquarium, it's like uh, to live in a ghetto. So we have a bad air and nothing to eat. And we turn the shit around. So that's <laughs> something completely different. The, the point is a cover and the recipes, which was made in 84 and the 90s, and which the most products still today using that type of, of recipes, are made from the idea that they check the skeleton, what is inside, and that they use then to give the cores, the bacterial, uh, uh, the, the, the trace elements. But the cores living with bacteria outside and they need for their for the body and for protection to, to, to create antiparasitics or to, to work uh, with antioxidant simulations to create colorations and to, to create uh, UV protection. They need these type of elements together with protein and fats and with the molecules they're creating underparasitic. Um, you uh, um, you broke up there. And you, you said to protect themselves. You said that they can and they can't in. You uh, you broke up there. You said cr they they create antiparasitic. It's one example. Okay. Yes, also others. So there's a bunch of different type of molecules which cr which uh, cause creating or and the bacteria which living on the microbiome on the body to make a protection against too many light, against uh, parasitic infections, like we do. We do the same. Every plant do that. That's, that's really nothing new. Um, one sample is uh, uh, sulfur together with fluorine. So with, they, they create a molecule with fluorine and sulfur, which is the base of them, together to fight against specific bacteria. And if fluorine is low and sulfur is low, they cannot increase that element to produce the molecules. And no weapons against the bacteria. So uh, there's, not, uh, there's not a lot. So Andy told me that <clears throat> I, I guess you guys report out fluorine in, uh, in your ICP test, but there's not a lot of other ICP companies out there that do report fluorine according to uh, what I've been uh, yeah. told. So that's what- Yeah, that, the colleagues from ATI do that also. And I think ICP analysis had also fluorine on the list okay. in, in my knowledge. So, so that's that's yeah. a critical uh, element then in your, uh, in your view. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Because fluorine, um, you know, everybody knows that uh, every reefer, which is a little bit more in, knows that to stabilize to, to stabilize the water quality, you need the right salinity, magnesium, stabilize, calcium, and carbonate. So, but the focus is only on that, and it's not understanding that fluorine, bromine, and iodine has the same relation together. So, if fluorine is not okay, you cannot stabilize iodine. If you cannot stabilize iodine, you have issues with light. So the most reason for dinoflagellates in cyanos is that you have low low level or changing level of fluorine and iodine. If you stabilize that, you don't have these issues. It's very simple. <clears throat> so iodine dosing can help in terms of dinos if, um, if, that, if that's possible, uh, you know, way it's to one, remedy. It's one way to yeah, do it. It's, 
it's one part of the missing elements. It could be in, in, in this case of uh, dinos, it's the highlighting and the low levels of elements of molybdenum, fluorine, very often zinc or iodine, sometimes bromine, which needs the coal to protect from the highlighting. That's, that's the same, you know, when you have a plant and you put them in, in the room and you put them too late out in the sun, they were burning by the sun. Because she had not the time to, when you put it in spring, it's not a problem. So the sun becomes stronger, stronger. You give fertilizer and the, and the plant can be strengthened up against the sunshine. If you let it in, so she has no power due to, to less light. You put it out, you give a lot of light and not fertilize it, then the plant is burning. So this is not a mistake from the sun. It's not a mistake from the plant. It's yours. Because you don't give her anything that she can protect from the sun. And that's the same for the cores. In nature... They have this all the time, absolutely stable and absolutely in relation. And they get all the nutrients and the elements by food because they eat the whole day. 